Hi again, everybody. This is Sita, Deepa Sita Raman, and I am back with you for the second module in our five module course on introductory communication skills. As I said before, this course will help you figure out what the best ways to communicate are and how to implement them in your career and in your life so you can have a productive, successful, happy, and enriching experience. This is module two, and in this module, we understand how communication works. What does communication involve, and how do we make sure it works for us? This module covers the following topics. Why do we communicate, and how do we communicate? It also shows you a simple model of communication. It discusses the barriers to effective communication. And finally, it talks about ways to communicate effectively. We will first look at why we communicate and how we communicate. What is the purpose of our communication? Is it to inform, to persuade, to build relationships? or some other purpose. And we will also look at the various ways in which we convey this communication, verbal, nonverbal, written, through visuals, and so on. In the column on the left, you can see the whys of communication. We may be communicating to inform so that better decisions can be made. We may be communicating to persuade somebody to support a certain point of view or to try and change an established point of view. Or we may be communicating to build better relationships. We do this all the time in our personal lives, to create goodwill between ourselves and the receiver or the recipient of our message. Now on the right side, the right column, discusses the hows of communication. In what ways do we communicate? We communicate with spoken or verbal communication which is face-to-face, -face, over the telephone, or by other media. In such forms, listening is an integral part of verbal communication. Another way we communicate is nonverbal communication. This involves our tone of voice, body language, the gestures we use, how we dress or act. A third form is written communication. Letters, emails, books, magazines, blogs, social media, all this come under written communication, which increasingly in our world today tends to be electronic communication or typed up communication. Then we have visuals such as graphs, charts, maps, logos, and other formats where we communicate through pictures. In this image, we look at a simple model that shows the elements of communication and how they interact with each other. Here are the models of, um, sorry, here are the elements of this model. We have the sender on the left and the receiver on the side. These two are essential for the message to be passed from one person to the other. Then there is the medium for the message and the feedback that the recipient or the receiver will send to the sender, saying message understood, message unclear, message not received, message not understood, and so on. So here are the components again. We have the sender, we have the receiver, we have the message, the medium or the channel for the message, and finally, the feedback. This happens in the context of communication. We have to take into consideration who is talking to whom, what the background of the participants is, the timing and the place of communication, and there are other elements as well that we have to take into consideration. Now, it's not a simple matter of sending a message and the message being received clearly by the other party. There are other issues here and this is the context of communication. All of communication takes place in an overall context 
which is widely recognized to play a central role in the success or failure of communication. The context includes the emotional state of the participants. How do they feel at the moment of the communication? Are they interested? Are they disinterested? The physical setting and environment of communication. Is it taking place in a noisy area? Is the communication taking place where there is complete silence? What is the relationship between the participants? Are both parties willing to engage in the act of communication? Or is one of them disinterested? What are the cultural and linguistic backgrounds of the participants? Are they from the same or similar kind of background? Can they understand one another clearly? Will there be some miscommunication or some misunderstanding? And there could be other kinds of context as well that play a role in the way the communication passes between one person and the other and how that communication is received and what kind of feedback becomes possible at that point. Now this model is useful in understanding what can go wrong in the process of communication. These are the barriers to effective communication. And with that, we will segue into what barriers can prevent effective communication from taking place. In effective communication, our objectives are that message is understood by the listener as intended by the sender, and that both parties are satisfied by the outcome of the communication. However, this is not always possible. What then can interfere in achieving these goals? If you will look at the text box on the right, you will see that these are the reasons why effective communication may become difficult. One, not having a clear purpose for the communication. Not having enough preparation, like keeping the message simple, or perhaps the timing is wrong, or the medium for the message is not appropriate or maybe there's not enough understanding of the audience. So for example, the message may be something that needs to be delivered face to face and you are using email or a text, which is not appropriate. Um, a, th a third reason could be poor style of delivery. Your feelings, your emotions, your nonverbal cues, these could be interfering with the way the message is being delivered. Or perhaps you're not sharing appropriate information. The amount of information you're conveying to the other party is not sufficient, perhaps. Another reason that there is a barrier is one party is not listening attentively or perhaps is listening selectively and this leads to miscommunication. Or there could be a lack of trust, a lack of respect, mutual respect between the two parties. Uh, and this could include lack of sensitivity to each other's values and feelings. This could also lead to breakdown in communication and form a barrier to effective communication. Now that we have seen what the barriers to effective communication can possibly be. With this understanding, let us see what can be done to remove these barriers so that we can have success in achieving the goals of our communication. So to overcome barriers to communication, here are some things we can do. One, have a clear purpose of communication and keep this in mind at all times. What is the reason we are communicating? If we keep that in our mind, we will perhaps not engage in miscommunication. Preparing before we communicate, knowing what we want to say, how we want to say it, when we want to say it, might help us get our message across effectively. A third way would be to know our audience. What are their cultural and linguistic differences from us? How are they different? How are they similar to us? Another way, keep the message simple. Use simple and appropriate words. Also, manage your body language, your feelings, your emotions. Do not allow 
other feelings to penetrate or show through. Finally, you need to listen attentively and act on the feedback. Is your audience engaged and interested in what you're saying? Are they looking bored? Do you need to change gears? That is, do you need to find another way to communicate? The most important thing is to make the other person, the audience, feel comfortable with the conversation. Especially if it's a difficult or sensitive issue, make sure that all parties are comfortable with the way the conversation or communication is proceeding. Now, before you communicate, here are some questions you may want to ask yourself. What is the main purpose or the aim of this communication? Then, picture the desired outcome. What do you hope will come out of this communication? What would you like to see happen at the end of that communication? How can you make that happen? Then, what about your message? Is it simple and concise? What about any ambiguity or any confusion? Are you saying something that can be misunderstood? If so, how can you make it clearer? A third, who will receive this message? What is their attitude likely to be? Are they going to be positive? Are they going to be negative? Are they going to be neutral? Also, how much would they need to know? Do you need to give them all of the information that you have? Do you need to give them some of it? or maybe some of it now and some later? Or is there some information that you need to omit that you do not need to tell them because it would be too much information at this point? What about timing? Is the timing right? Are you approaching them at a time when they're likely to give you their full concentration? And then what about the medium? What is the channel that you're using to convey the message? Is it appropriate? Are you using a text for a boss which may not be the most appropriate means of communication? Are you using face-to-face -face communication when perhaps a set telephone call or an SMS message may suffice? So think about the right way to convey that message. And now we're going to look at some ways to make you a good communicator. So ask yourself these questions. Am I a great communicator? You are a great communicator if you do the following. And this is before the act of communication. So think about it. Before you communicate, do you think of the purpose of your communication? Do you think of your feelings and your emotions in the matter? Do you think of your audience and their background? Do you try to anticipate possible causes of confusion and misinterpretation and eliminate or remove those? Do you commit to being truthful and respectful? Do you commit to making your audience feel comfortable and free to share their thoughts? Have you screened out distractions? Have you kept your message simple? Have you chosen a channel or a medium that is appropriate for the message? Here, think about accuracy, how they will understand the message, and the urgency of the message. We discussed what you need to do before the act of communication. Now let us look at what we can do during the conversation or during the course of the communication. During your communication, you may want to periodically step back and think about whether you're expressing your thoughts clearly. Are you mindful of your feelings, your emotions, your body language? Have you been making eye contact? Have you smiled when appropriate? Have you been serious when necessary? Are you mindful of your audience? What is their frame of mind? Are they interested in what you're saying? Are you listening actively? Listening actively involves nodding, making eye contact with the other person, not interrupting, and so on. Have you been listening and actually taking in what the other person is saying? What about feedback? Have you sought feedback? Also here, watch for nonverbal cues. If your audience is yawning or looking bored, chances are they are bored. How will you then 
make them feel interested in what you're saying. Perhaps you can ask open-ended questions. This could be for clarification, but this could also be to engage your audience in the communication. Have you paraphrased for clarity? Which means, have you rephrased what you've said and said it in other words so it's clear to your audience? And then, of course, there is the case of conflict when the two parties cannot agree with one another. In such situations, you always want to keep your desired outcome in sight so you don't get sidetracked. You want to make sure to handle disagreements with tact. You want to manage negative emotions well, especially yours. You want to seek first to understand and then be understood. You want to look for and build alignment. You want to appeal to a bigger cause or a higher purpose so that the goal of communication is not lost. This then brings us to the end of module two, where we looked at understanding communication and seeing how it works. Briefly then, you want to be clear about your purpose and keep it in mind at all times. You want to get to know your audience and their expectations. You want to make your message simple and appropriate for the audience. You want to manage your tone, your body language, and your emotions. Very important, listen attentively. And finally, act on the feedback that you receive in a positive manner. All these tips, if practiced well and if improved upon, Time and again, as you get the chance to improve upon your communication skills, will help you become an effective communicator.